This is a film on how a small local authority in Denmark has shown the way to balance the soil's ability to nurture plants and human use of them. Energy and the accumulation of nutrition in the food chain stem from plants alone. Plants use energy and derive nutrition from the sun. Denmark consists of hundreds of islands of different sizes. Grinstead is located on the peninsula of Jutland. A large part of the Grinstead area is farmland, producing potatoes, corn, cattle fodder, milk and pig production. The food industry, consumers, farming and local residents all work together to ensure that the nutrients and crops removed from the fields are utilised and replaced after processing and human consumption. Harvest crops are used in the vegetable food industry for production of a range of products. Some crops are also used for feed in pig production. The pigs are slaughtered and become human food. The byproducts from slaughterhouses and other food industries are collected and sent for processing, where the last elements of energy content and nutrients are used. Food remnants from private households are also collected and processed. Refuse collection crews pick up paper sacks full of food remnants. All these groups of refuse have one thing in common. They are organic and full of energy and nutrients that can be used to produce electricity and heat. They also yield a nutritious byproduct used as fertilizer for new crops. This is a substantial contribution to sustainable food production in a world facing a shortage of energy and nutrients. The plant is the first of its kind in the world, and what makes it unique is the production of biogas from sewage slurry and organic waste products. In a process with high energy utilization and sanitization at 70 degrees centigrade of the byproducts to remove any risk of infection for plants, animals and humans. The Grinstead Local Authority is interested in partnering with other local authorities or towns all over the world to enable them to gain the benefit of our experience and build similar plants. Let's see how the plant works. This is fermentation waste from a company producing food additives. Refuse collection trucks collect household refuse within Grinstead and the surrounding countryside. Food refuse is collected every 14 days. The temperature in Denmark rarely exceeds 30 degrees centigrade. 90% of the time, outdoor temperatures are below 20 degrees centigrade. Processes at the plant are integrated, mixing solid and liquid refuse. Slurry from domestic sewage, including toilet sewage, is mixed with household refuse. Food refuse, which residents sort to a purity degree of 99%. This is also mixed with organic industrial waste from the area's food industries. Before and during mixing, solids are broken down, mixed with slurry, and then mixed with the industrial waste, before being sanitized at 70 degrees C, cooled to 40 degrees, biogasified, and dehydrated, before the residues are stored in a tank, which can take a full year's production. Sewage slurry is pumped in from this tank. Food refuse is broken down in a two-phase process, which also involves magnetic separation. The processed refuse is then stored in a buffer tank, from which the precise amount needed can be transferred via a computer-controlled belt conveyor. Sewage slurry and deconstituted food refuse is mixed in the pulper in batches of 10 cubic meters. The mixed and pulverized refuse is then pumped around the plant. Liquid industrial refuse is pumped from the industrial reception tank by injection into the mixed pulp from the pulper. 
The mix goes into a storage tank and is then ready for heating and sanitization. The pulp is pumped in batches into a heat exchanger system where it's heated to 70 degrees and pumped at this temperature into the sanitization tanks where it's kept for one hour in accordance with criteria set by the authorities. After an hour, it's pumped through the heat exchanger again and cooled to 40 degrees. The heat drawn off during cooling is transferred to the next batch to be heated and supplemented by hot water from a generator. Sanitization destroys all harmful bacteria and helps improve the yield from subsequent biogasification process. The pulp is pumped from the sanitization tanks in batches to cooling in the heat exchangers for the decomposition tank. The biogasification process is mesophile, which means that gasification occurs at 37 degrees centigrade, a process without oxygen, which is the same which occurs when swamp gas is formed. After an average of 20 days, the pulp, now slurry, is pumped in batches for sanitization in the heat exchanger system, where it's cooled to around 21 degrees C. From the heat exchanger system, the slurry is pumped to a sieve, which filters any remaining contaminants out before pumping it onwards for dehydration. The slurry is dehydrated by addition of a substance which separates solid particles and water. Dehydrated slurry becomes a dry substance of approximately 24% TS and is pumped to storage. The drained off water is passed along with wastewater to a purification plant on the same site. There is sufficient storage capacity for one year's production of slurry, providing safe storage until the appropriate time for spreading on agricultural land. When sowing starts in the spring, the slurry is spread on the fields according to a closely calculated fertilization plan. This ensures that no more nutrient is applied than the plants need. The slurry contains 10 kilograms of nitrogen, 6 kilograms phosphor and 0.4 kilograms potash per tonne. 3,000 cubic meters of biogas are produced every day in the decomposition tank, which is stored, and fuels a gas turbine, which generates heat for the processes. Surplus heat can be used for heating outside the plant and for electricity for the public grid. Biogas is an alternative to fossil fuels which release CO2 into the atmosphere. Biogas is CO2 neutral. The plant is based on an idea from the Grinstead Local Authority and built with consultancy help from Kruger in Denmark. It has been in operation for 10 years and proved its worth. Its successor is so large that Grinstead Local Authority has to replace the existing turbine with one twice the size. The plant cannot supply all the energy needs of Grinstead, but can solve a refuse problem and ensure recycling of the energy and nutrients accumulated in the food chain thanks to solar energy. Energy and nutrients could well be in short supply within the next hundred years or so. That's why planning supplies for the future makes good sense now. By thinking and planning long term, we can ensure an efficient ecosystem, rich flora and fauna, sustainable food production, Increasing industrialization and urbanization means we need to think in terms of such solutions. Processing refuse according to this model can produce electricity and heat in many parts of the world, sufficient to cover 25 to 50% of current energy needs.